Alright everyone, so we already learned how to create an immutable array. In other words, an array that can't be changed. We set an array, and that's our array for the rest of the program. But say we wanted to create an array that, you know, maybe we didn't know how many things we were going to put in it, how many objects, and maybe we wanted to like delete an object later on and replace it with another one. Well, if you want to do anything weird like this, then what you need to do is create an mutable array. And this is actually kind of similar to creating a regular NS array, but it's in a different class. NS mutable array. Look at that, I already filled it in. And go ahead and name it something. I'm going to name mine change me since we can change this array. And in order to create it, what you need to do is set it equal to a NS mute a bull array, of course, that's class. And to give it an idea, first of all, of how much how many objects you want it to hold, array with capacity, go ahead and type in however many numbers hold on, got an itch in my ear. There we go. However many objects you think it's gonna hold. And I'm gonna set mine to default at twenty five. Now the cool thing about mutable array is if you add more than 25 objects, then your program is not going to freak out. It's going to automatically change the size of your array to fit the needs of your program. So say, instead of 25, you accidentally put in 28 objects, it's not going to send you an error message. It's just going to automatically increase the capacity of your array. So this is pretty much just giving an idea since we need to build something to start out. So the first thing I want to teach you how to, what to do is manually add objects to the end of an array. Now go ahead and remember the array's name is change me and in order to add an object to it go ahead there's a built-in method called add object pretty cool and I'm gonna be adding numbers to this array but again we're 43 that's just a data type we don't wanna add numbers right like that we wanna actually add objects see add objects and remember I told you that whenever you want to create a number object you type ns number this is from the number remember we talked about number objects string objects here's what you do you type ns number and then create number with integer and then you type in what value and let's say our program by the way is gonna store create an array of all the even numbers from 2 to 100. So we already added 2. That's a good starting point. Let's go ahead and add 4 too, you know, to give it a little bit of some momentum. So 4, and go ahead and do this 50 times and add 100. I'm just kidding. There's a lot easier way to do that. I mean, we already gave it 2 and 4, but now we have to do 6 through 100. No way, I'm not typing all of that manually. What I'm going to do is make a loop to automatically add the even numbers 6 to 100. So want to know how to do that? Well, you are in luck because I'm about to show you. And I set this equal to 6. So you start at 6. Where do you end? Make sure i is less than or equal to 100. You just can't put less than. You can put i is less than 101, but just put that. And now what we want to do is we want to loop through two at a time. We want to go 6, 8, 10. We don't want to go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We only want the even. So go ahead and put i plus equals 2. And this is going to loop through 6 to 100 by 2's. So now, for each time it loops through, the first one's going to be 6, second one's going to be 8, third is 10, so on and so forth. So now what we can do is go ahead and do this exact same thing add a number object but instead of typing in the number manually just put an i and what this is going to do is going to loop through and each time it comes across a new number new even number it's automatically going to plop it on the end of your array so now at this point right here we got an array of objects of number objects from 2 to 100 all the even numbers so now we want to see some proof that this actually works. So let's go ahead and display the array. So in order to display the array, let's go ahead and make another for loop and put int x. I don't like to use int i again. Uh, set this equal to zero. This is what we want to start. And how far in the array do we want to go? Well, check this out. X is less than, and you want to say, well, how many members are in the array? Sometimes you know, sometimes you don't. I mean, we could have put 50 but maybe it's 51, maybe it's 49, maybe something weird happened. Check this out. If you automatically 
want to get the length of your array, put change me, which is the array name, and count. And this is automatically going to count how many objects are in your array. So this is awesome. This is pretty much what you should do every time when you're looping through an array. Because, I mean, you could type like 50 manually, but sometimes you have like one off or you know sometimes you don't get it exactly and you don't want to have a bunch of weird error messages and this is a foolproof way to get it right every time and of course we want to loop through them once at a time because remember we're looping through the array index and this is of course starts at zero goes through one two three four five this isn't two four six eight ten that's the what's in the array the array index still starts at zero goes from one two three four five and so on and so forth so ns log at and let's go ahead what but item should we, nah just put item here is percent i looks good so far so now all we want to do is make sure you add change me object at index and here is where you right all right if i could get this selected there we go. Objects index x. So what we're going to be doing right now is looping through the array and each index or each member of the array is an object. So we're going to loop through each object but we don't want to print out the object because well I'll show you. Look what happens if you print out the object. You get all this weird stuff. A thousand. This is the object right here. We want to find what the integer value in that object is. So what we want to do is, oh, it already filled in the other bracket for us. That's pretty cool. Integer value, just like that. Now remember, all these 1,000. These are the where the object is stored. So now let's go ahead and save and check it out. Oh yeah, beautiful program right here. The item at index zero is two. Item at index 1 is 4, item at index 2 is 6, index 3 is 8, and so on and so forth until you get 100, which is the last one. And check this out. Remember at the beginning where we said array with capacity 25? Well, I mean, there are more than 25 numbers in here, so that's the beauty. 25 is right here. So what it did is it automatically, since there's a mutable array, automatically added more room for objects as the program needed it. So that's the difference between a mutable and immutable array. Mutable ones are pretty much a lot cooler. And again, this is how you automatically add elements to your array. And this, my friend, is how you loop through each object and print out the integer value, whatever is stored at that index. So with that being said, we are ready to move on to the next subject. I mean, this is enough with arrays for now. We got the basics of mutable and immutable. I mean, we can probably build some pretty sweet programs from now, but I don't know what I'm going to be teaching you next, but it's going to be awesome, and we are one step closer to iPhone programming. So thank you for watching. If you want any of the source code, click on the link below, and you can get it for free. So uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.